Hey, I sat down with hedge fund giant Stanley Druckenmiller, and here is what Mr. Druckenmiller had to say about tech and his bet on the so-called FANG stocks. I really, really like those names long term, and those 13F filings don't show what I have against them. And it'll be... What do you will, mean what you have against them? Well, they're called shorts. Um, <laughs> are they just hedges, or are they, in other words, are you just hedging no, your exposure? I don't, are they I don't, shorts I, in I, other I, social media companies? Or? I don't really like hedging. To me, if something needs to be hedged, you shouldn't have a position in it. But there's so much disruption going on in our economy and in the global economy. There's plenty of opportunities to find on the other side. I think... Like IBM, which you've traditionally shorted? I don't know whether IBM's stock is a short right now, but that's, that's the kind of company which to me has been underinvesting, um, buying back stock, paying dividends, while their competitors are basically eating their lunch in cloud and in AI and everything else that is, that is competitively mispositioned. Or like retailers, old line retailers, I'm sure you know this, uh, we have 24 square foot per person in the United States of retail space. China has three, Germany wow. has two. I would call that being overstored. So are you shorting sort of a, a, a basket of retail names or? I have been short retail throughout the year and depending on the time period, sometimes larger, sometimes smaller, and I would expect that, to, that theme to continue. So you're hanging on to Amazon, even after the run that it's been on? I love Amazon. Um, this company, which everyone keeps quoting the multiple, right. is selling for less than three times sales. Well, who knows? I, I haven't checked it in the last few months. But uh, the S&P is selling for over two times sales. They're dramatically under earning. I don't think looking at the price earnings ratio is, is the right move here. Um, you have to look at the long-term earnings power of the company, and they are intentionally under-earning their investing. I, I, I think Bezos is incredible. Do you like the Chinese uh, consumer companies for the same reason? Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba, those uh, seem to be emulating Amazon's strategy. I don't think I'd say they're emulating it. Um, I really like Tencent, and I really like their position. They're, you know, they're in uh, payments. They've got their own version of Netflix. They've got their own version of cloud. WeChat is probably the best platform on the entire planet for all of it. And then they have a gaming business. You know, it's funny. If you look at Amazon, AWS is, is basically funding all the investments they're making in the other areas. With Tencent, their games are funding, funding. everything else they're going. So you like, own Tencent, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like Amazon, Tencent is intentionally under earning, and it just the long term growth looks incredible. I think it's 40 times earnings, and they're going to grow at least 40%, so it's one times growth rate. I, I still like it. This is a little bit different, but what about Tesla and Elon Musk? Do you see analogies between what he's doing and Amazon and Bezos, or is that actually for you a problematic valuation story? Have you ever owned it? No, I'll tell you a funny story about Tesla. I had a I had a guy who managed some money for me come in when the stock was $82. And I, I think I was 62. I, so I had given myself a Tesla for my 60th birthday. <laughs> and he had this incredibly effective analysis, like 20 pages of financials, um, about why Tesla was a short. And at the end of this presentation, really well thought out, I said, have you ever driven the car? Mm -hmm. And he said, no. And I sent him his redemption notice um, <laughs> the next week. So you didn't short it? I did not short it. Uh, and I don't know why it never occurred to me at the end of that conversation why I didn't it. buy it. <laughs> but no, I don't put Tesla in the Amazon category. They have not proved to me that as a, as a financial model and an economic model is going to work. But no, I, I don't also don't like to short um, great products. That's not, that's not my deal. Fantastic stuff again, Cal. I can't wait for more of this. But I mean, some of those statistics in terms of retail, US 24 square foot per person in the USA, Germany two, China three. And he could not have been more positive on Amazon. Right. Uh, yes, which, you know, it's after the kind of run that it's been on, the, the thing for people is not, you know, is Amazon a strong company? It's, is Amazon 
you know, worth it where it's mm -hmm. trading right now. And as he said, as far as he's concerned, but I love that, you know, you, I love when people don't have to have the data because, you know, last time I checked the price of sales a couple months ago, you know, it was it was not that much above the S&P. And so I imagine it would have to be substantially above for him to change his mind at all about it being overvalued. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was loves it. He says Bezos is incredible. I, I think interesting that he likes Tencent as well. Of course, lots of people can be very positive on Alibaba, on Tencent, on Baidu. The difference there is it's not as clear a play. Facebook for social media, Amazon for all things other AI and developed. There, there's more, there's more comp competition between a couple of them, and, and he pointed to that with Tencent's cash flow really coming from games at the moment rather than anything else. And by the way, and I, I should emphasize this as well, you know, in China there is some concern about the relationship between, for example, jo uh, Ma of Alibaba mm -hmm. and Jack Ma and the Chinese government. Now, in the U.S., you could also say there's concerns about whether regulators are going to be very tough on the thing uh, giants, and one of the things that Mr. Druckenmiller said is the U.S., instead of trying to protect our steel and our coal industries, should actually be trying to protect our big tech platforms because it's one of the most essential things that we can kind of, you know, one of the services required for the, that the rest of the world requires. So at a time when there's a lot of antitrust sentiment developing in Washington against these platforms, he would actually take the other side of that and say that we ought to nurture them and encourage them to do even more business overseas. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't like hedging. I like that. Yes. Buy stock, stick with it. <laughs> Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.